In this video, we're going to have a look at angles in circles. This is regularly, this regularly comes up at National 5 level. It's usually worth three marks. It comes up in every paper and every prelim. There's essentially three types that can happen inside, or three types of angle situations that can happen inside circles, all related with triangles. We'll look at each type, uh, look at the background as to how it happens, and then we'll look at a few examples uh, and how we can calculate missing angles within each scenario. So type one, we're going to look at isosceles triangles. For today's lesson, I recommend you have something like a ruler to draw straight lines and something to draw circles with. Um, whether that be a coin, but preferably something bigger, like round the edge of a can, would be quite helpful. Okay, so if we have a look at this circle here, we've got our centre marked O, and then we've marked on two lines here. OA, we've marked on the line OB, and then we've joined A and B together, we've made that chord AB. If we examine the lines OA and OB, do you notice that both of those lines are the radius? Yeah, it goes from the centre to the circumference. So in that case, OA is the exact same length as OB. Hopefully you can see that. Because we have got a triangle that has two equal sides, that means that we've got an isosceles triangle in this circumstance. And in isosceles triangles, with our two sides that are the same length, that implies that the opposite angles are also the same length. So, for example, if this angle here was 30, which is opposite that side, the side that's got the same length opposite that side will also have an angle of 30. Okay, so when we have a triangle formed by two radii, it creates an isosceles triangle. Let's have a look at two examples and how this works in practice. Okay, here we've got an example here. Let's call this example one. Example one. So we've got a triangle here, O, A, B. Hopefully you can see that the line O, A is the radius. Hopefully you can see that O, B is also the radius. Because the radius is constant throughout a circle, we can then say that this length is the same as this length. And because those lengths are the same, we've got an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, the sides that have the same length have opposite angles the same. So this angle here, opposite that side of the same length, will have the exact angle, the exact same angle across there. So we can say that this angle up here is going to be 24 degrees. But what if we wanted to work out angle AOB? Well, then we would have to apply our knowledge of triangles. Okay, angles in a triangle add up to 180. So to work out angle AOB, we'll do 180, subtract the other two angles added together. So that would be 180, subtract 48, which is 132 degrees. Try that again. 132 degrees. So that angle in there is 132 degrees. Okay, so that was just some basic geometrical reasoning there. Okay, so if you see two radii, you're looking for an isosceles triangle. Let's have a look at this example. Let's call this example two. Essentially, it's just a case of filling the missing angles here. So let's imagine in this example, we are told that, I'll go with dark blue. Let's imagine that we are told that from, I'll try and do this a wee bit better, from here to here, the angle is 110 degrees, and we want to find the rest of the missing angles. Well, how can we do that? Okay, so, what we're going to have to apply here is our knowledge of straight lines. We can draw on some angle facts that we've learned in the past. Angles in a straight line add up to 180. So if this part here is 110, this part here must be 70 degrees. Okay, let's see what else. How else are we going to work out the rest of the angles? Let's have a look at the triangle inside. So, OK is a radius. OL is a radius. That implies that this length is the same as this length. 
if this angle across from that length is 70, it means that the angle across from this one must also be 70. If we want to work out the angle KOL, we will just apply our knowledge of uh, angles in a triangle. They add up to 180. So if I want to work out the missing angle, I'll add the two angles together and subtract from 180. So the angle up here is going to be 40 degrees. Your first set of examples are looking at angles in isosceles triangles. Sometimes you have to bring in facts from other areas such as um, straight lines or vertically opposite angles. Okay, so that was like type one. Type two, we've got angles in semicircles. What I'm going to do for the background here is to draw a diameter. A diameter goes from one point in the circumference through the centre to the other point on the circumference. And let's pick any point on our circle, on our circumference, and let's take the end points of the diameter and let them meet there. So there's the first point and there is our second point. So what this forms here, and it's kind of obvious, or well, hopefully it kind of looks like it just from looking at it, but see this angle in here? This angle formed when our diameter, the two end points of the diameter, I'll try and highlight it, so the end points of the diameter, here and here, when the end points meet at a singular point, at that point we have a right angle formed. So this angle in here would be 90 degrees. So this is sometimes referred to as angles in a semicircle because if you just look at it, the like the top right of the, the circle here, it's like a semicircle. Okay, that's the background for angles in a semicircle. Let's see how we work out some angles based on this. Okay, let's look at example one. Once again, each time can actually copy down this diagram. Okay, let's imagine that in this uh, question, we are told that this angle here is 42 degrees. And the question wants us to work out angle PQR. Angle PQR would be this shaded angle here. That's what we want to work out. Well, let's see what we can work out. If we have a look at the angle RS, or sorry, the triangle QSR, do you notice that we have a diameter? And the end points of the diameter, these two points, meet at a point. So at that point that they meet, that's a right angle. What we can do now is we can apply that, or we can use our angles, our triangle knowledge to work out this angle in here. Okay, so we'll do that first. So we're going to do 180, subtract 90 plus 42. So we're going to do 180, subtract 132, which is 48 degrees. So this angle in here is going to be 48 degrees. But we wanted to work out PQR. Once again, we're going to have to use our angles in a straight line facts here. The angle in a straight line add up to 180. So therefore, to work out angle PQR, we're going to have to do 180 subtract 48, which will give us an angle of 132 degrees. So the angle from here to here is 132 degrees. I can't show you every single type of question. You just need to kind of like apply each and individual, like each individual bit of knowledge here. This is starting to get more examy. This sort of example, example two, we want to find angle BCD. So angle BCD would be the angle starting at B, going to C, then going towards D. So we want to work out what is this angle. So let's have a look at it. If we have a look at the triangle ABC, AC is a diameter and it meets the circumference at one point. So that point there is a right angle. I can work out the angle ACB now. Because so we're going to do 180, subtract 90 plus 27. 
that's going to be 180 subtract 117 and that will be I think that's going to be 63 degrees so this bit in here is going to be 63 degrees so now we're going to have to zoom into the other part of the triangle and see how we can work out OCD if we have a look at the other triangle this is a radius this is a radius therefore this length is the same as this length this angle is the same as this angle so this angle in here must be 41. So in order to work out angle BCD, we're going to do 63 plus 41. And that's going to be 104 degrees. So there we're bringing in both types of the examples we've seen so far. Okay, last example type is a tangent to a circle. A tangent to a circle is a line that touches the circle at one point. So you can see here the tangent touches the circle at only one point. I'm going to draw something here that is not a tangent. That is not a tangent because it touches the circle at two points. This here is a tangent because it touches the circle at one point. When we have a tangent to a circle, if we were to draw a line from the centre to that point of contact, it creates right angles. A tangent intersects a line from the radius at right angles. So there would also have right angles. Every year, tangents are always going to be coming up. Okay. So two examples. Then that'll be us. Let's say that this angle here was 20 degrees. And we wanted to work out this shaded angle up here. Well, you need to be able to spot that the line PQR is a tangent. Because it's a tangent, I know that this angle in here is a right angle. So if I want to work out the angle uh, height shaded in yellow, um, I'm going to do 180 subtract 90 plus 20. And when you do that, that's going to be 70 degrees. Finally, last example. Let's say in this example we want to work out the angle AOB. Well, what do we have here? We can see that we've got our tangent line given here. So therefore, we know that the angle from here to here must be 90 degrees. However, we're told about this little bit in here being 18 degrees. So therefore, this little part up here has to be 72 degrees in order to get that full turn all the way around of 90. Then let's see what else we've got. Well, OC is a radius, OB is a radius. So this length is the same as this length. Therefore, this angle is the same as this angle. So that's going to be 72 degrees. Adding them together will give us 144. 180 subtract 144 is 36 degrees. And so if I want to work out this angle in here, we'll do 180 subtract 36 degrees. And that is going to give us our 144 degrees. So we've zoomed through there. We've looked at three different types of angles and circles. And um, hopefully you can now apply that to different scenarios. Thanks very much.